this is a brief introduction to the new pre-registration nursing curriculum and the South Practice Assessment Documentation for Nursing, abbreviated to the South PAD and commonly known as the South PAD. The NMC introduced the new Future Nurse Standards in 2018 and hopefully you would have already have seen that it has seven platforms within it. The curriculum therefore is designed under each of the seven platforms. It also contains essential skills in relation to communication and relationship management. And it has an appendix within the future nurse standards related to nursing procedures. The nursing procedures are extensive and have increased in breadth and depth. The new curriculum for September 2020 at Oxford Brookes University has been designed to meet the requirements for adult, children, mental health and dual registration as our mental health programmes. These are delivered at bachelor's and master levels and both of the types of programmes information can be found on the Brooks web pages. This is a new course for new starters in 2020. We also have students on the 2019 course and whilst they may continue under the 2010 standards, we have introduced increased skills and proficiencies for them that match the future nurse standards. The new South Practice Assessment document will be used across all of the curriculum for assessing practice. The practice hours across the parts of the programme have been altered to allow for changes in skills teaching and essentially what we have done is we have introduced front loading of skills across the parts, particularly in year one and year two. This has meant that the hours in practice are fewer in year one, but they increase as the programme progresses. The students continue to have two main placements a year, although we recognise that the hub and spoke model is increasingly used where students spoke out from their main placement area. And the students continue to have other exposure to fields of nursing, particularly through the hub and spoke model. Stakeholder events have given us feedback and we have built this into the new curriculum. You will be familiar with the new NMC standards for supervision and assessment as we introduced them in September 2019. And obviously the practice assessor and practice supervisor and academic assessor roles still continue with the new documentation. There are key changes in the OBU curriculum. So what are they? The teaching content in the university has changed and we have introduced bioscience modules. As a result of student feedback in particular, we have reduced and consolidated the numbers of modules. This in turn has reduced the assessment burden for students, which is a good thing. For a new approach to grading and practice, you will find as I go through the presentation that it has been simplified. No longer do you have to grade the competencies, but we have the South Pad does introduce what is called episodes of care, whereby these are event timed assessments where the practice assessor observes the student doing something in practice and grades them against a criteria. There are big changes in procedural skills, as discussed before, in relation to the appendix in the future nurse standards. You will find an increase in number and an increase in breadth and depth of procedural skills. This has increased the number of proficiencies required. We also have changes in policy documents at Brooks and in the practice learning partner organisations our students will need to undertake more complex skills earlier on in their course in order to meet the proficiency requirements. 
you will find there is a medicines management assessment within each part each year of the course and this is in the practice assessment documentation. The NMC standard 4.17 in the future nurse standards has said that the universities need to make sure that the students demonstrate the ability to progress to a prescribing qualification on completion of the course. Thereby, we have had to introduce knowledge of pharmacology to the care of people and you will find proficiencies related to this in the practice assessment documentation. The module content develops themes across the three years and there is an increasing focus in the third year on medicine management and prescribing. The students have to be practice supervisor ready. That means that within their course they have some theory but they are also assessed in practice against the criteria to demonstrate effective supervision and teaching of a junior colleague. This is within the third year and is a designated episode of care in the South Pad. The South Practice Assessment Documentation was a project that covered the whole of the South and related to all education institutions that deliver nursing within the South. Based upon the Pan London documentation, the South Pad has been produced in a hard copy. But what Oxford Brooks do, as you know, is they have an electronic platform called the BPAD. So the practice assessment document has been translated into the electronic platform. And I will show you some of the screenshots from the actual BPAD and what parts you will be expected to complete. So, what are the parts within the practice assessment documentation? You will find professional values as a section within the documentation for every year, every part. You will also find proficiencies within each part. As already mentioned, there are episodes of care these are timed assessment points for the student undertaken by the practice assessor. And there is medicine management for the part. Orientation to the placement you'll be used to. It's been slightly altered and amended with some additions from the South Pad but you will be familiar with this. And each area needs a yes, no answer to it. You save the form and finish it at the end. You and the students will probably be used to this. And as a little reminder, you need to try to get the orientation completed on the B-pad at the end of the first week of placement. Professional values are for each placement. And this is a screenshot of some of them under the categories preserve vet safety and promote professionalism and trust. So for example, in, under promote professionalism and trust, number 14, the steward maintains an appropriate professional attitude regarding punctuality and communicates appropriately if unable to attend placement and you would have it as an achieved or not achieved professional value. Similar to any assessment process you have a formative assessment of the professional values at the midpoint review. This can be undertaken by a practice supervisor and overseen by the practice assessor. But when it comes to the end of the placement, the practice assessor needs to say whether it has been achieved or not achieved. 
if you have students not on target to achieve a professional value, as mentioned before, there are episodes of care. These are timed summative assessment points. That means that you have to organise them well ahead and prepare yourself and the student to spend some time observing the students undertaking the assessment. In part one, year one, the two episodes of care have formative grading attached to them and they are related to the direct care of a person. So this is the student undertaking the, a care episode with a patient or client and being directly observed by you as the practice assessor. Later on, I'll show you the grading of them. In part two, both of the episodes of care are summative and they relate to the student undertaking care of a group of patients with increased complex care needs. In part three, the first episode of care is related to teaching a junior learner in practice, where you have to observe the student delivering teaching to a student. And that is based on the delivery of direct person-centred care. The second episode of care in part three is related to the organisation and management care for a group or caseload of patients with complex care. So this is where the, the student has some leadership and management responsibilities in order to organise that group care needs. So what about the grading of the episodes of care? You will be familiar with the grading score of one to five and it is based on the practice assessor feedback. You need to offer opportunities for the student to practice the episode of care, whatever the requirement is, with the practice supervisors before actually assessing the student undertaking it. The student can have as many formative opportunities to practice as you feel is reasonable. The student then is observed by the practice assessor on one occasion, a timed summative point on the placement. And as we said on the previous slide, you need to organise this well ahead. You cannot expect us to notify the student, say, two days before that you're going to observe them when they haven't practised or equally identified the patient or the group of patients that they're going to undertake the assessment on. As I said, each of the episodes of care has to be observed by the practice assessor. There are guidelines in the assessment documentation it's to exactly what the criteria for each of the episodes of care is. And we'll show you one on one of the following slides. The learning outcomes generally are related to the knowledge, skills, attitude and values that the student demonstrates when they're delivering the care. The student always writes up a reflection after the episode of care. If you look at the scale below, the practice assessor is basing it on whether or not the student is not achieving up to five, which is excellent and independent. And when you are grading each of the proficiencies that are demonstrated against the episode of care, you need to to read and understand what is within the grading criteria. 
The student, for example, in part one, is expected to participate in care and perform with increasing confidence and competence. And if the student demonstrates an exceptional standard of nursing practice and is able to articulate an in-depth knowledge of the evidence-based of care for that particular patient in that episode and does not require any cues or support or direction at all, then you would grade them at level five. So just to repeat, the practice assessor must observe the student undertaking the episode of care and assess them against the criteria. Practice supervisors support the student to identify the appropriate patient, client and to practice their skills and gain formative feedback on their practice before the final summative assessment with the practice assessor. There is a slide here of showing you identifying the guidance that relates to an appropriate episode of care involving meeting the needs of a person, family, receiving care. And this is a year one student. So what do they have to demonstrate? They've got to demonstrate five platforms within the future nurse standards. They've got to demonstrate that they promote health and prevent ill health. They've got to know how to assess the needs and care plan. They've got to know how to provide and evaluate care. They've got to know about safety and quality of care. And they've got to know about how they coordinate care. This is one of the assessments. So again, as before, you're grading the student against each criteria according to the scale. So if we look at the episode of care here and the standard of proficiency, it says takes an accurate history and undertakes a person-centred assessment in order to plan effective care. So you would look at the grading criteria, having observed the student participate and deliver the care, and then you would score them. And you would have the student's name and you would have the date in which you assessed them. We do also expect you to fill in comments related to that standard of proficiency. As discussed, there are proficiencies for each part. These are achieved or not achieved. For part one, guided participation in care. For part two, active participation in care. And in part three, the student should be practicing independently with minimal supervision. As the practice assessor, you need to look at the criteria and make sure that the student has achieved or not achieved against the criteria. Similarly, if you feel that the student is not on target at the midpoint review to achieve their proficiencies, you need to have a discussion with the student and the link lecturer in order to set up an action plan. This is an example of some of the proficiencies. There's no grading, remember. So one of the proficiencies at the top here, number 11, assists with washing, bathing, shaving and dressing and using appropriate bed making techniques. You look back at the criteria, if this is a year one part one student, for example, and can the student do these? Yes or no? Number 12. 
Medicines management forms part of the assessment across the year part. Need to give the students some feedback on their medicines management and then it is a yes, no answer to each of the criteria within it. Does not have a grading or competency criteria against it. So for example, number four on here is maintains effective hygiene infection control throughout. So throughout the administration of medication. You will be familiar possibly with the completed sections overview. There's a B-pad dashboard indicator to show when each of the sections are completed by you and the number of hours is filled in by you according to the number of hours that the student has done within that placement. Please try to do this regularly so that it is timely not following the assessment processes could lead the student to appeal against the process not being followed. There are more resources on the Brooks, Re Brooks website related to practice assessment and there is also obviously on your NMC professional body website.